so it is post Spookathon. The week happened so fast. It <laughs> happened very fast. Um, I think we all had a really busy week last yes. week, but reading was done. Mm -hmm. And we're here to wrap up kind of what happened during the week. Yeah. There will be a vlog from me coming. It will probably be quite late. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even started editing it yet. <laughs> we're busy. We're busy. It's fine. <laughs> but that'll be a surprise video at some point. <laughs> cool. Um, but yes, let's just kind of go prompt by prompt yeah and we can good. discuss everything we read i know a couple of us don't have the books with us myself included <laughs> um so i might do some editing magic or i might be lazy you're gonna have to wait and see <laughs> <laughs> all right so first prompt was read a thriller i did read my intended thriller i listened to the audiobook for the october man which is in the ben aronovich's mm. uh, oh, rivers yeah. of london series um it was pretty good the um I kind of liked seeing the same elements of his London stories with a new detective in yeah. Germany, so it was kind of cool. I read some mixed reviews on it, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it the the dead body they found was pretty grim. It was like <laughs> filled with some like mold rot Ooh. kind of thing. Like it was it was pretty grim, <laughs> but it was like trying to. It was a nice little whodunit with like magical gods and mm -hmm. other kind of creatures kind of involved so fun i really yeah. liked it and it was nice to like um a little tie over till the next book comes out cool. next year i think so awesome. nice. yeah what are you sally um i kind of had mixed categories mm -hmm. but i think this probably fits the thriller the best out of all mm -hmm. of them um this is the one that i said was quite long and I wasn't sure I would get through it. And somebody in the comments was like, in the UK, it was only like 350 pages. Is it longer in <laughs> North America? No, the book itself is bigger and that's what was fooling me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was long. Yeah, it's, okay, it's 392 pages in the arc. So long-ish, I have not finished it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I made some decent headway in yeah. it. Uh, and it's really good. Nice. Um, yeah, very this is one. yeah. This is definitely an adult one. It is not YA, um, but uh, it's really good writing. This is the one that's about like um, uh, a group of women in like rotating perspectives mm -hmm. uh, at a law firm. They all work together, and there's this like list of bad men that's going around, and one of the biggest offenders is like about to become the CEO of their company mm -hmm. and they decide that that cannot happen um i really like this one it definitely reminds me of um big little lies oh, okay nice. um uh, mainly because sort of like interspersed between each of their perspectives there's like um courtroom transcripts gotcha. uh which i love so yeah i will for sure be finishing this um slowly but surely slowly but surely <laughs> but yeah definite it was a winner for me cool um, I believe I picked Fractured, um, which was the short story collection. I think you did that one for another one, but did you can totally count that. I talked about that one last, and we yeah. made fun of it. <laughs> what did I pick for a thriller? I don't remember. Oh, A Brief History of Seven Killings. I believe oh, yeah. that one. Right. <laughs> right, 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 Liar. Right, right. But I did read that. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it was a me book. Mm. Um, I found it really interesting, and there are parts of it that I really, really mm. liked. Um, but a lot of it is told with a, um, in a Jamaican dialect, which was really interesting because I listened to the audiobook. Right. And it was pretty much the first time ever where I actually had to listen to the audiobook on like one time speed so I could actually <laughs> just like understand what they were saying. That's which... how you get through so many books. <laughs> oh yeah, I okay. definitely have... I listen to audiobooks at like the same speed as I speak. Like, you know, like it just makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, um, as fast as I can. Um, uh, wait, I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes so much sense. Okay. Um, just because I can't, I just don't have the patience for it. But yeah. in this case, it was really interesting um, <clears throat> to listen to. And I really liked that part of it, especially listening to the audiobook mm -hmm. with like the dialect and the accent was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just way too long. Mm -hmm. like, okay. and, like, I'm not intimidated by big books. I don't think books need to be short. But this is like, I think it was like it was 500-ish pages, yeah. and it just didn't feel like it needed to be mm. that long. Mm. <laughs> um, like it needed a good editor? Good editor? <laughs> like, it won the man Booker, so like, people oh, do like it. <laughs> 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 so like, I just don't think it, 
was for me. And okay. it is a book about um, the attempted assassination of Bob Marley, but they never say Bob Marley's name in the book, which I thought was really interesting. They oh. always call him the singer. Hmm. Is that like because it's unauthorized or something? No, or I don't. I don't think so. I just think it was a choice, and huh. I get it. Interesting. Um, okay. So yeah, again, I didn't love it, but I know people do. I get it, but it wasn't for me. Okay. Fair. Um, slightly connected to yours, and I was thinking about this when I was like, what am I going to say when I talk about these books? I listened to the audiobook of The October Man as well, and I really enjoyed hearing a German dialect and mm. a German accent while I was listening. It felt like I was listening to something completely new that I've never yeah. kind of listened to before, because usually it's all like American yeah, accents exactly. or British accents, mm -hmm. but to hear something I was like, oh, I kind of like this. It makes it, it was a bit more, more exciting. Authentic, kind yeah. Of. <laughs> hmm, nice. Cool. What about you? All right. So this was the one I had read for <laughs> yeah. in The oh, Hall yeah. of the Knife by Diana Peter Frown, which was the uh, the clue-based <laughs> novel. <laughs> and okay, so I started it as my cynical self, and I was like, it's based on a board game and or the movie. Like, it's going to be what it is what it is. But you know what? It was a ton of fun. <laughs> it was really fun. It was very tongue-in-cheek. Like, yeah. you can tell that um, the the author Diana Peter Frown is a major fan of at least the movie. Okay. Because there was at least one reference that I caught, and it was like the best reference. To, <laughs> so whoever has like seen and loved the Clue movie, like they do make reference to like the flames on the side of my face thing, which is just fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's like four people that got there. I was like really yeah. excited. Um, but it, yeah, it was a ton of fun, and there's definitely going to be at least a sequel, possibly mm -hmm. a trilogy involved in this. And you know what? I'm probably gonna read the next one because it was a ton of fun. Nice. There's even more mysteries to unravel here. <laughs> it's it is a good time. Nice. Cool. I love books that yeah. don't take themselves too seriously. It, it don't. Totally. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it literally starts in like a dark, cold, stormy night. Like it's just, <laughs> it really it. rolls with it, and I'm like, it. you know what? I'm here. I'm I'm gonna enjoy this, and awesome. it was a ton of fun. Good. Cool. All right. So the next prompt was read a book with red on the cover. I did. It was the Gravity Falls Lost Legends graphic novel, mm. which I meant to have today because I wanted to show a few creepy pictures that were inside of it, but it was just ended up in the stack that I returned to the library, mm. and then the next day I was like, oh, why did I do that? But it was really good. It was a lot of fun. I laughed out loud a lot, <laughs> and it was also kind of creepy. There's in one of the stories, Mabel has her face stolen. <laughs> so in this one scene, That's very Avatar. She's watching TV and Grunkle Stan walks in and she just turns to him while like drawing a smile on her face. And I was like, oh my god. That's scary. This is really creepy, but so her. Mabel all at the same time. <laughs> so um, if you are a Gravity Falls fan, just you go read it. It's so good. Thanks for it. Who are you, Sally? Uh, this was a failure for me. I said that I was going to read book two in the uh, Dark Deep, and I didn't even pick it up. So, alas, but there's alas. still red on the cover. <laughs> uh, but I, but I didn't do it. It's okay. But this has it has red on the cover. <laughs> I found a book with red on the cover. <laughs> um, mine for this was Tokyo Ghoul, um, which was the first book in a manga series, and I read it. And I, I, I liked it, but it definitely was like setting, now they like set up the world. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of like, okay, this is the first a lot of homework. Homework. There's a lot of like mm -hmm. homework and like setting up the world. And like now that it's ended and he is in this like ghoul society, now the story can like start. Yeah. So I'm definitely interested in reading more of these because now I feel like they'll be way more exciting than this first volume, even mm -hmm. though I did like it, but mm -hmm. I was like, Okay, now we're in it. <laughs> so that was mine. I only didn't have very much red on the cover, but there was some. And that's all that matters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so mine, I'm Ooh, still yeah. in the process of reading it, so I haven't quite finished it, so like not quite a success. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Tinder by Sally, what was it? Gardner. Gardner. It's Tinder by Sally Gardner. It's real good. It is very weird, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very fairy tale. Like, it's obviously inspired by a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, but it's the whole like readability of it is just a fairy tale like things happen that make no sense and everyone is just like okay uh-huh uh-huh it's just is mm -hmm. what it is oh that person can do that all right <laughs> you know like the very first like page sort of opens oh. up with like he meets death Ooh. on a battlefield whoa like and again That's like cool. that <laughs> so scary. everything but it's also like like death is just like so do you want to come with me and he's just like no and <laughs> then death's so like 
cool. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, that, that's sort of like the tone of the whole right, thing so right. far. And I'm only about halfway through. I will finish it because I'm finally into it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love it. It's just, it kind of takes a bit of on working on what you think totally. this, like, right. wh what a narrative should be. It's yeah. not quite following that, which is not bad. But uh, I'm just like, okay. Half the time. Yeah, just gotta get used to it. Um, gotta, yeah, gotta, 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 you gotta get used to it. But it's real good and it's real creepy. The pictures are so good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it really helps. And like yeah. everyone, like the like some things will just like bleed into. Ooh, cool. Nice. Yeah. It's Neat. it's so so fun. Book yeah. Design. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. A plus book design there. So the third book is to read a book with a spooky word in the title. I was going to read The Monster of Ellen, Ellen Haven. Haven. Yeah. I read the first, like, two little chapters, I think, and then Life Busy, and I just didn't get a chance to pick it back up. So, uh, a bit of a fail there. But, what else? I did read one more, but I don't think it has a creepy title, so we'll move on. No worries. <laughs> um, I think this is the one I chose for this. Oh, I think it is, too. Beautiful Darkness by Fabian Vellman and... Kara Scott? I have no idea how to pronounce that, but uh, there you go. It's also got glitter glue over the top of it. <laughs> Thank you, library. Um, <laughs> this is a graphic novel uh, that Drawn and Quarterly put out, I think in 2012. Oh, so cool. I, it's so cool. I recommend it, but it's like unbelievably unsettling. And there's some like really disgusting things oh. in it. Uh, it is not a children's graphic novel. Oh god. No. Um, <laughs> like all kinds of warnings. This is not a children's book. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, described as like an anti fairy tale. Right. And uh, I was like reading reviews about it and like on one hand it's got like echoes of like Moomin and like the right. borrowers and like kid things. <laughs> and then on the other hand, it's like, uh, it's just like disgusting and dark and violent. But the art is so beautiful. But the did art is, but did you like it? I did like it. Okay. Right. I read it, like most of it I actually read this morning. I just picked it up last night. Mm. Um, but as I was describing before, it's like this like fairy tale setting and the main character is this teeny little princess here, but you can see that there is a hand here and like the whole thing <laughs> centers around this happens in the first like page so i this isn't a major spoiler but um ah, yeah all these little creatures are like living and surviving off of like a dead child that's just like oh, in the yes. middle of the woods it's that's messed gross. up <laughs> uh and i think it's like an anti-fairy tale because like typically in a fairy tale there's like some sort of like moral code or right. moral lesson and this is just like just terrible <laughs> everyone's out for themselves there are no consequences like yeah. uh these little like fairy tale creatures will be like they'll like watch their friend die in like a disgusting way and then be like oh well like <laughs> hey do you want to go play like there's just there's no <laughs> it's just, it's bizarre. It's really, really bizarre. So how, like, I, bugs on bodies would actually work. <laughs> be like, oh well, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, like, also, like, a lot more twisted fantasy than that yeah, as well. Yeah. Cool. It's messed up. But yeah. well, if you're up for it, definitely. I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't remember what I picked for this. Monsters, I think, is probably it. Because monsters. Oh, yeah. I, Mon did <laughs> yes. I also chose Monster. And we right, yeah, okay, yeah. So I picked Monsters <laughs> Volume 3, um, which is an adult graphic novel series. This, see, I had kind of a weird week because this was my least favorite in the series so far. Right. I was a little bit bored the entire time. The art was still beautiful, but I didn't find myself, like, wanting to read it. Like, mm -hmm. it took me a few days to get through, which is, mm, that's, and, like, that's tough. And like it's still like this beautiful story, and again, I, I thought it was setting up for more. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like, okay, read five pages, <laughs> and like, yeah. So it was beautiful, and I will continue on the series. But I was huh, just kind of bored. Oh, <laughs> so crazy. yeah, I was a little bit disappointed. But I feel like I might have been in a weird headspace last week or something because everything I was like, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it but yeah. So there we go. I read it. It's fine. <laughs> Counts. <laughs> Counts. All right. So mine was a uh, grimoire noir 
said it right this time, <laughs> uh, so by Vera Green Tea and Jana Bogic. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was good. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, the artistry Ooh. involved Ooh. in this whole thing is truly, okay. truly exceptional. Yeah, um, yeah there's, it can get pretty dark. But overall, the story kind of left me wanting a bit more. Right. Um, yeah, so it's it's about this boy whose sister goes missing uh, in this town where all the girls are born witches. Right. Um, and his sister has a ton of power, and she's just gone one day. And so their mother's distraught, and he's desperately trying to find any clues about where she is. And his father is like the town sheriff, but he can only do so much because... Right. He's investigating his own family's missing mm -hmm. child. There's only so much power he has and authority he can sort of like wield. So this kid sort of takes it on on his own to try to find as much as he can about his sister. Huh. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of things happening behind the scenes. A lot of, you know, when you get people with a ton of power and then people with mm -hmm. not, there's obviously going to be a massive social divide there. So they sort of touch upon that. And there's some really interesting things that are, are touched upon. But it feels like this would have been stronger if I know that there's a sequel coming, and I don't think there is. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, they spend okay. a lot of time sort of setting up everything. And as far as I know, it's ultimately not going to go anywhere or continue right. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But, again, Beautiful. the illustrations <laughs> are mad gorgeous. <laughs> like, it's worth it almost just to, like, see, because they're so lush and beautiful mm -hmm. and just interesting. Neat. So... Yeah, so you win some, you lose some. Kind of, yeah. Kind of like <laughs> middle of the road there. Cool. Okay. Yeah, there we are. All right. So next up, we have read a book with a spooky setting. Okay. So I did not plan to read this at all, but it came up in conversation with drinks with friends, and I listened to the audiobook for uh, the Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham. Um, I had never heard of it before, but it is the source material for the movie. Uh, Village of the Damned, oh, right. with the mm. like super blonde, white-haired kids with like golden eyes and stuff, <laughs> and so it's just set in this small, I'm assuming British town. I listened to the BBC audio play right. with Bill Nye and an ensemble cast, and it was like Ooh. incredible, um, but creepy. So it takes place in the village of Midwich, where there's this day called I think they call it the Blackout, or the the Black Day, or something where suddenly everybody just goes unconscious and they wake up like 19 to 20 hours later and nobody can remember what happened. <laughs> and if you, ent if you entered the zone during that time, if you got too far in, you would also just collapse and be unconscious unless someone dragged you out and then you'd come back. Hmm. And a few weeks later, after this incident, all the women in the village discover that they're pregnant. <laughs> and nobody knows how, nobody knows why, mm -hmm. so they kind of keep it all like under wraps in their own village. And then when the kids are finally born, they have like a hive mind kind of, and they can like are telekinetic and they can mm -hmm. make other people do things by twisting their mind a little bit. And it was just like, whoa, this place is weird. <laughs> but it was really, really good. And I enjoyed cool, listening great. to it. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to get my hands on, I got my hands on an ebook, but it wouldn't load on my phone. So I went with the audio thing mm -hmm. that I found, but I think I'd actually like to read it and see how well the radio adaptation was. But right. It's kind of creepy, and I've never actually seen the movie, so now yeah. I'd kind of like to check it out, I think. Huh. Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere it came, and I read it. Or good. listened. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> All right, you. This one, I did Wilder oh. Girls by Rory Power. Um, I really liked this one. I was talking to Karina about it, and so I, I won't say anything about the ending, but apparently it's a divisive mm -hmm. ending. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I thought it was perfect. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, takes place at the Raxter School for Girls. It is a quarantined girls' school because um, a, like, viral disease called the Tox has come through, and it basically, uh, it infects everybody differently, but it, like... Mm changes your body so some people are like growing gills and some people like are uh like like growing like second spines and like all this stuff like it's 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 weird <laughs> um but uh it was fantastic i really liked it cool um yeah definitely uh icky in some parts and it's it's pretty dark but uh it was beautiful. Um, it reminded me a lot of 
uh, Annihilation, the, mm. the first of the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, who also blurbed it on the back. Um, but uh, yeah, in that like sort of uh, alien plant or like plants turn taking over or Ooh. it's great it was great i really really enjoyed it <laughs> yeah that's what i really want to read yeah um i chose after dark by haruki murakami mm. um this turned out to be the only book i read this week that i really liked <laughs> so yay mm -hmm. <laughs> um it's probably one of my favorite murakami books that i've ever read mm -hmm. um it's set during uh one evening like a course over a course of like six or seven hours um over over one night in Tokyo and it's about this girl named Mari who uh, is kind of meets a few different characters over the course of the evening she meets uh, a boy who plays trombone she meets the manager of a love hotel which is a very Japanese thing um, and she meets an abused Chinese prostitute mm -hmm. um, and this kind of they're just it's a very simple story and but then there's the, of course more kind of a speculative twist where um, a while ago, I don't exactly remember how long ago, might have been a month or so, I think. Um, at home, uh, Mary's sister, Ari, decided one day, and she's like the beautiful sister, the one who's like always going, like she's going out for modeling jobs and things, uh, just decided she stood up from the dinner table and she's like, I'm gonna go to sleep. Um, which wasn't weird. But then she's been <laughs> sleeping ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so, and like, she just, oh, and she like weird. has normal, like they'll put out food for her and it'll disappear, but nobody's ever none of her family has ever like witnessed her like get up to go to the bathroom but like right. clearly like she's still sleeping and like the doctor said like there's nothing actually wrong with her she's just asleep um and so that's uh, the other thing that's happening during this one evening and i'm not gonna say how it ends obviously but i really really liked it it was it's not a very long novel it didn't take me very long i think again listen to the audiobook and it's less than five i'm um, less than six hours mm -hmm. um but it was just like, you really see Mario's character as kind of like, she feels herself to be the lesser sister. Um, but also like, she still loves her sister and her sister's been asleep. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I really liked it. If you like Murakami, I think you would definitely like it as well. It yeah. definitely follows. It's one of his, le le it's less complicated than some of his books, but definitely really liked it. <laughs> and Tokyo, it wasn't actually a spooky setting, but. <laughs> Whatever. How could you have known? That? Yeah, I, I didn't know. Tokyo <laughs> in the middle of the night sounded scary when I you were like, talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you got? All right, so uh, I think I had said that I was like pretty sure one of these was gonna fit the bill. Right. So while I think they do technically both fit the bill, like this takes place in the woods, but also at a ton of different places. Mm -hmm. So I think for that reason, I think Grimoire Noir I think fits it better because yeah. like okay. the whole thing takes place in one town. And for reasons of the story, it's constantly raining, and again, mm. full of witches. Nice. <laughs> so done and done. Perfect. More noir. All right, so last prompt was to read something that you wouldn't normally read. So my intention was to read The Haunting of Hill House. I'm not a huge horror fan. I don't not, not read it, mm -hmm. but it's not something like I gravitate towards. I did not read this, but I am still going to use The Midwitch Cuckoos as... Mm -hmm. Something I wouldn't technically re normally read if we hadn't had such an in-depth, interesting conversation about it. Um, I probably would have never nice. have reached for it, but right. it was it paid off. It, it was counts. really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this was also my choice for uh, something you wouldn't normally read. I don't read a lot of classics, um, so I got the audiobook for this mm -hmm. one. I would still like to actually read the introduction by Guillermo del Toro because I'm curious what he has to say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite done the audio. Actually, I'm not I'm nowhere near done the audio. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a third of the way through, sure. I think. Um, I'm really bored. <laughs> uh, it is not really my cup of tea. I like womp it's womp. starting to pick up, mm -hmm. but there was, you know, a solid three long chapters, three of like eight or nine yeah. in the entire book. Of just set up and a lot of like character development and stuff that I don't care about. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. Um, and it's like only just starting to get spooky, but like not even that spooky yet. Mm -hmm. um, I also realized about 
a chapter in that it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen is based on this, and that's like all I can picture a lot right. of the time now. And Not the mini the, series is what you're talking no, about. No, yeah, 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 I'm talking about the haunting with like <laughs> Lily oh. Top, Lily Taylor, and Owen Wilson and Catherine Zeta Jones, and <laughs> I love like I love the whole cast. Who's the the doctor? Somebody too. Mm. <laughs> He's great, whoever he is. I'm blanking on his name, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm undecided whether I will even finish the audiobook, but I probably will read the intro because I know that this is like an important book mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. I just haven't really figured out how I had uh, I know that I did enjoy it, but was not scared once. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and it's, I enjoyed it for the like the pop culture significance. I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, because it's like referenced in a lot of other like horror stories. And, exactly. You know, like, so I know, feel like okay. it's like definitely like. It's like the OG haunted house kind of, <laughs> right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I get it. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> I will read it too. Like, yeah. I owe it to my friend to like give it a fair shot because he's like, you need to read this. Yeah. yeah. And of course, uh, for book club, so I should. <laughs> yeah. Um, something I wouldn't normally read. I didn't finish this, but I got like halfway through. And that's a, a short story anthology called Fractures, the Tales of the Canadian Post-Apocalypse. It's so specific. It's so specific. Um, I will say, I feel like for most anthologies, like there are some stories in here that I really liked, and there are somewhere there was one that I completely was like, <laughs> this is not gonna finish this one, even though it was only like ten pages long. Um, the one story in here that I've told everybody about already because I thought it was really well done and just so Canadian was there's a short story um, that is like an alternate version of Anne of Green Gables um, but it's called it's about Matthew and it's called Matthew Waiting <laughs> and it's a version of Anne of Green Gables where it's still like that time in, in the world and everything but their mysterious disease has killed everybody except for Matthew God. in his family in his family so like and like in his town people here. so like he there's no Anne there's no Marilla there's no uh Diana and there's no oh my God, what's his name Gilbert the old Gilbert so is he just like alone in PI? not only that but he keeps taking um or orphans from the mainland he keeps taking them in and he's looking for so he has a group of like Anne's he calls them a group of Gilbert's and a group of Diana's and he's looking for his Anne oh my god <laughs> and he's described it to me already and I'm just like oh, it's like, it's so him, sad. and like he's just like looking for his Anne again like he wants his kindred hearts and like and he's like an old man and, the, and like all of the characters like fit like the Gilbert's like act like Gilbert's and like they're concerned for him and like want to help him out and like they, and like oh, this like the carefree Diana is in like like the Anns who are all again like Anns, but they're not his Anns. Yeah, and <laughs> and it was it was only like ten pages long, and it was so good. <laughs> but I was like, so I'm like happy I've read just even this much, just so I can have read that story. But like, if you know the story of Anne Green Gables, dear Lord. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that. <laughs> Something I wouldn't normally read, but. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so my pick for this one was uh, In the Hall with the Knife, because I don't really yeah. read a lot of mystery or thrillers, or, you know, I guess books based on board games. <laughs> um, yeah, and pleasantly yeah. surprised, as I've already yeah. said. It was lots of fun, so nice. success. I love it. All right, so that was our Spookathon. Some successes, some misses. As you do. As you do. We're super going to be back next year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but let us know if you guys uh, participated in Spookathon. Let us know if you had any like new favorites, new new worst reads, whatever. Let us know down in the comments. Um, and again, my vlog is coming. When? Nobody knows. Mystery <laughs> for the ages. Mystery. It's another mystery. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. Uh, happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.